Hello people all of the web and YouTube, to the PK here, and today I'm going to be guiding you through how to RGH in Xbox 360. Now with that said, the key word here guys is guide. This isn't exactly going to be a tutorial because I ended up having to rush a lot of things. So what I ended up recording with was well with my phone most of the time because of the hurricane and everything. I just didn't have time to go get my camera set up and to be honest I just wanted to get everything done as quick as possible. So forgive me here, some of the footage gets cut and some of it outright looks terrible. However, I will be providing screenshots and things on screen as well as a text overlay to to help describe what I'm doing and to help guide you guys through what it is exactly you need to do in order to RGH hack your Xbox. Now with that said, let's get on to the actual guide or well tutorial bit of this video. First of all, to RGH in Xbox 360, you got to determine what type it is and if it, if it even can get RGH hacked. Now in my case, I determined my Xbox was a Jasper based on the power plug and you can do this by looking at the screenshot I have on screen now. This screenshot will tell you how to determine what Xbox motherboard you got and once you determine what motherboard it got, then you can determine whether it can be RGH hacked or not. Mine happens to be a Jasper like I said, so I knew it can be RGH hacked. So I decided to pop open the case first and foremost even before I had the parts and things to well RGH hack it because I knew the case on my Xbox 360 was kinda worn down from being opened and closed so many times and I was kinda right it ended up well breaking when I took it apart which is a bit disappointing but thankfully once it's back together you won't even notice the break. Anyway, to take apart your Xbox 360, it, it depends on what kind you got. In my case, you had to pop the top and bottoms of it off after taking the hard drive off. And then you can just take the faceplate off and pop the clips in the front and back of the Xbox and the thing should just lift open. Now if you're having issues opening the back clips, there's a chance they may be already busted and caught on something, that's what happened with mine anyway. But for the most part, they should open fairly easily if you use the right tools. Now once the thing is apart, you just gotta remove like 16 screws or something like that. I can't remember the exact number off of my head, but most of them I believe are T10 or T8 screws, so you're gonna need some special screwdrivers to do this if you don't already have them. Now with that said, once the screws are all out, you wanna flip the console over if I remember and pull up. Because if you don't flip it, the DVD drive will fall out and things, just as you guys could probably see, I ended up doing in the video by a mistake. Anyway, now that we got our console all apart, we gotta get the parts and things needed to, well, read the NAND, as well as to actually glitch the board into booting into our hacked dashboard. Now to do this, you're gonna need uh, two things. Now you're gonna need something like a JR Programmer or a NANDX, the choice is yours. I ended up using a JR Programmer, and you're also gonna need a glitch board. Again, the choice is up to you. I used a, uh, what's it called? A Cool Runner Rev C, although you can use something like a Matrix or an Ace V3 if I remember. There's many many kinds of glitch boards out there, but if you want to do this cheap and easily, use a JR Programmer and a Cool Runner. Anyway, now that we got our board to read the NAND, we want to attach some wires to the vias on the motherboard. Now you can choose to do this while the console's inside. Well, the motherboard's inside the console, I should say, if you have the skill to do it. But in my case, I ended up taking the whole motherboard out to solder these wires because I just don't have the skill or confidence in myself to do it that way. Now, with that said, you want to attach the wires to the vias in a certain spot, color code them to the wires that come with the JR programmer. But in my case, I didn't use the wires that came with the JR programmer, which is why my wiring is a different color than it should be on the guide. However, just be aware you want to match the colors that come with the wires of the JR programmer to the motherboard. And speaking of wires that come with the JR programmer, you can use those if you want. They're not necessarily crazy long and I found out they're really hard to solder to the motherboard, especially if you're not that great at soldering to begin with. So I recommend just extending them wires out about maybe an inch or two and then using your own if you have color coded wire. In my case, I didn't have color-coded wire, I only had wire that came from a phone line cord, which is good enough, and even though it wasn't color-coded, I just put the wires, the wires where they needed to go and matched the ends of the wires to the respective colored wire on the programmer cord itself. 
anyway once you have the wires all hooked up the next thing we got to do is we got to well set up jrunner on our computer jrunner is a software program used to interface with the nandex or jr runner programmer i should say now to actually get JRunner, there's many different download links for it, but I ended up using the one by the, either the Weekend Modder or Mr. Mario, because every other version of JR Programmer I tried out there, even the official one, ended up crashing on me. So depending on what system you got, maybe one version of JRunner will work better for you, or maybe one won't. But after we got JRunner, we first then, well, we secondly should get the drivers for whatever programmer it is we're using. In my case, I'm using a JR programmer, so I had to get the JR programmer drivers over at Team Executor. Now, to install these drivers, it's going to vary from system to system, but on Windows 10, you can just type in a simple PowerShell command, which I will link down below, and that will enable testing mode on Windows after you restart. Now when the driver is on successfully, the next time you open up JRunner, you should see the little icon indicating what programmer you got in and plugged into the computer. If you see this icon, then you can continue on to the next step. Now, from here on, we want to unplug the programmer from our computer, plug it into the motherboard of our Xbox 360, and then we want to plug in the Xbox 360 to the wall. Now, the key word here is don't power on the 360, just plug it in. You do not even want to have the ring of light board even attached at this moment in time, because you don't want to turn the system on without the fan, and you don't need it on to read the NAND so just plug it in that's all you got to do plug in the Xbox and plug in the JR programmer and then plug in the JR programmer to the computer now from this point we can then open up JR runner and then we can hit the little question mark in the program now this question mark will identify what Xbox you got as well as what um, NAND you got now in my case I already knew this thing was a Jasper, no surprise, however it was a big block Jasper so it means it will take a long time to read or write anything to the NAND. Anyway once you hit the question mark it will pop up with the prompt just hit OK and then from there you can go over to the read write section on JR Runner and click the 4 and change it to a 2. I will highlight what I mean on screen but we want to change the reads from 4 to 2 because if you're running something like I am with a big block system you will know if we were to do 4 reads it would take like an hour to do get done so we want to switch that over to 2 reads which will take about 18 minutes like nine for each read which is pretty reasonable in my opinion now it doesn't really matter how much you get in terms of reading it you just got to get two matches so once we select two we can then hit read NAND now this part will take forever depending on what console you got like I said and when it's done it will make a ringing noise and then it will ring again when it's done with the second read now, once it's completely done, it will tell you whether they match or not, or whether there were any bad blocks in the NAND. In my case, I somehow didn't have any bad blocks, which surprised me. In most cases, though, in most cases, though, you will have some bad blocks, but the JR Runner program will remap them for you. As long as the program says the NANDs are the same at the end, you're pretty much good to go. But before we continue on doing anything else in GA Runner, we want to hit show working folder. And then when that folder pops up, we want to, well, copy the output folder. The output folder houses our NAND backup. Essentially, this is our current dashboard as well as what update we're on on our Xbox 360. If we lose these files later on and we mess up something later on down the road, we're not going to be able to save our Xbox. So we got to back up the these uh, NAND profiles or NAND dumps I should say just in case things go wrong later on so it's always good to keep those on some other device such as a flash drive or a CD of some sort. Anyway once we got those backed up we can then head back over to JR Runner and then go into the program and just click on create Zell if I remember. 
No, it's not create cell, it's create ECC. We want to click on create ECC. This will then create our Zell image for our NAND. Now, this is what essentially is going to glitch and hack our Xbox later on when we install our Cool Runner. So let the program create the ECC. And after it's done creating the ECC, we want to then write the ECC. But before you do that, make sure you back up the NAND dumps. That is most important in this situation. In most guides, they would stop you at creating the ECC, then wait till you installed the Cool Runner. But in my case, it was easier for me to write the ECC and then detach my cool, my JR programmer entirely from the motherboard because you can then later install the updated dashboard with the flash drive. So you're pretty much done with the JR programmer at this point if you decide to write the ECC now. I ended up writing the ECC, and since the ECC is only 50 blocks in length, it will go on twice as quick compared to actually putting on the, our main NAND profiles or NAND dumps, so to say. So yeah, if you got a big block system like me, I recommend just writing the ECC right away after you made your backups. And then once you got the Cool Runner in later on, you can then install well the dashboard update and things with the flash drive. Anyway, I kind of misled you here, but this is the end of part one. If you want to know what to do next and later on, you'll just have to wait. Because at this point, we should be done with anything with the JR programmer on the motherboard side of things. You can then detach your wires if you want to. And if you don't want to, you can keep the wires on. Optionally, that's up to you. Now, in my case, I took most of the wires off. The ones that were a little bit stubborn, I just kind of left on for now. I removed them later. But yeah, from this point on, we essentially got our Zell image on our Xbox, but we don't have a way to boot it, which will be covered in part two. I will be showing you guys how to program our Cool Runner chip, as well as how to install it in our Xbox, and hopefully I'll be able to do this with some better quality video, because the storm has passed and things, and I should be able to get some better video of me installing this for a change. But yeah, with that said, like I said, this is the end of part one, and I'm going to leave the video off here now. DTPK, signing off. Peace. Worked for me, all I had to do was just take it out, reseed everything, and in the end, it worked. I should never have to unplug. Anyway, I ran the softmod installer, full well knowing that my MS backup didn't fully complete it error.